Pardon the interruption, but I'm Mike Wilbon. It's only after getting bumped to ESPN2 on Friday. We are back on ESPN today. And Tony Corners, and I could tell because it smells better over here. It does. Man, it you're, just, you're just insulting the people at the Deuce, taking a shot at them. Not really. I'm actually smelling my dog. Jesse is down laying on the floor here. <laughs> Happy about that. Welcome to PTI, boys and girls. Today's episode, the men's Final Four is set. The women will get there tonight, and Patrick Beverly taunts LeBron. But we begin Ooh. today with the news that Lamar Jackson had asked the Baltimore Ravens to trade him three weeks ago. The former MVP clearly does not wish to remain in Baltimore under the franchise tag after he could not work out a satisfactory contract there. Apparently, Jackson hasn't gotten a contract offer he likes on the open market. Jackson's a great player. Wilbon, what do you expect the Ravens to do? Uh, the Ravens play it by ear, Tony. I mean, I, you know, I, I understand what Coach Harbaugh said today. I expect him to be there week one. I expect him to be my quarterback. He said all the things I think, particularly been blindsided by a tweet as he walked into a room, that a coach should say and, and, and have some harmony uh, with that player who he's been close to for five years. But I think they have to play it by ear. You see if somebody makes an offer. If somebody makes a great offer, then you listen. If they don't, then you keep trucking. You put the franchise tag on him, and you keep moving. So I, I think this is fluid now. Um, but nobody's made that offer, Tony. I mean, he said he, he made this known on, on March 2nd. You've had a month. Yeah. Nobody's come forward with an offer. People don't want to give him $230 million guaranteed. And wow. you got to pay yeah. twice if you do it now. You got to pay up the, the two draft picks unless you work out some of the compensation, two number ones, and then you're going to give him $230 million guaranteed. Nobody's done that. But Lamar says, well, this is my value. Well, let's see if it's your value. This is interesting to me that you are sympathetic to John Harbaugh on this. I think two things stand out to me as I look at the overview. One is that our friend Jason Lockenfora had this right months ago when he said Lamar Jackson is not going to play there again. And two is that I don't know what John Harbaugh is talking about. If this is true, if Lamar Jackson told the team that on March 2nd, then John Harbaugh has known that for three weeks. And for him to continue to go out there and say, I love him, I love him, he's going to be our quarterback. Like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? If I am the Ravens, I sit down and I wait for the offers to roll in. And if I don't get an offer I like, I continue to sit down. And if Lamar Jackson doesn't want to play, I say, son, there's a seat over here for you, too. Because, and I don't want anybody to think that I, that I believe that the Ravens have the upper hand because I don't. They're going to lose an MVP. They're going to probably lose a shot at the Super Bowl as a result of this. But if I'm going to lose a great player, Mike, I'm not giving him up for nothing. I'm going to wait and get something that I believe is a good number. And, and you, also, Mike, go ahead. You just said, what is Harbaugh talking about? If he yeah. lands back in that room, Harbaugh's got to coach him. All I'm saying is, I don't he care about play Harbaugh's there. position. Harbaugh, I really don't know if he doesn't want to play there. This could all just be negotiating. They all wind up saying, well, it's a business. I understand it's a business. What? You've had a month. Nobody's made an offer. So That's maybe right. he will right. wind up back there again, Tony. This is not the NBA. Even though quarterbacks do have a leverage that is more NBA-like than the rest of their brethren in the National Football League, he could wind up back. Nobody's biting. They've had three and a half weeks. This. Where are they at? This is a bombshell to me in this regard. This is clearly the ripple effect of the Deshaun Watson fully guaranteed contract. Yeah. Yes. I don't know of a young, great quarterback who's had success, who has walked away from a team at this age. Andrew Luck quit. Michael Vick had legal issues. And everybody else is old when they leave. They're old. Yeah. This is different. Yeah. And by the way, Baltimore, they've won last, I checked, two Super Bowls. And Lamar yes. Jackson wasn't the quarterback of either team. And he's That's won right. one playoff game. I'm just saying. Okay. Let's move to the surprising Final Four. Last year was all chalky. This year is the opposite. Florida Atlantic top Kansas State. San Diego State upset overall number one seed Alabama. 
Then edge Creighton after a tough foul call on the Blue Jays in the final seconds. Miami eliminated one seed Houston, then top Texas. And UConn continued blistering opponents, beating three seed Gonzaga by 28. Yeah. Killed my bracket at that point. Tony, what do you make of what went down this weekend? So I watched whatever I could this weekend. Three of the games were great. And the Gonzaga-UConn game was a complete a dog. And Stunner. my explanation on that is that Gonzaga gave everything it had to beat UCLA, a game that probably meant the world to them, being a West Coast school. And they had nothing left after that. They had nothing left. And I said this to you, when Tennessee beat Duke and then lost to Florida Atlantic, they just really had nothing left. I am surprised, Mike, that Kansas State lost to Florida Atlantic. I am surprised that Texas lost to Miami. I thought Kansas State and Texas were potential winners. Um, let me give credit to Florida Atlantic. They've won 36 games this year. They got on yeah. the foul line. They made Keep everything winning. they had to make. Now, I think, I think Noel should have taken a last shot. I don't think he should have given it up he to a guy who didn't seem surprised. He was going to take the last shot. He was going to take the last shot. seemed surprised to get the, the ball. The play was so to come should. back to him. All right. Yeah. Well, he didn't. Okay, he didn't. And then I, I was really impressed with Miami. Tough man-to-man -man defense, down 14 in the second half, and again, knocked down every foul shot that they could. My only disappointment on the weekend was the ending of the San Diego State-Creighton game because you don't make that call. I'm sorry. You eat the whistle. You don't make that call. Creighton had just made a great defensive steal and a basket to tie the game, and it shouldn't end on that. I'm glad you went through all that, Tony. I'm, I'm glad you went through the details of the weekend. I found the week, the two weekends, wildly entertaining. Wildly entertaining. Like, it can't get any better. I mean, you had these great performances. You had a breakout star in Noel. You had all this going yep. on. It was wonderful. I was hanging on every play of every game. I didn't miss anything. And now, eh, eh, I'm done. I'm out. I don't care. And it's not because my bracket's dead. My bracket's been dead a few times in my life. And I had Gonzaga, Arizona, Marquette, and Texas. My bracket's dead. But yeah, I just, dead. the entertainment portion of the program's over. Now it's just For four you. teams. It's to me, to me. I, yeah, you know, and yeah, I look, yeah. I, I watch as much of this as anybody watched it, except some, maybe some NBA scouts in America. And now I'm done. Like, like, the result is less interesting to me than the process of getting there, if you know what I mean. And so I loved the process. And now, Tony, I don't find it compelling. Yeah. I don't find the matchups compelling. I mean, UConn is interesting in a way because they keep winning these games by just blowing people out. You're going to love the out. next story then. But, nobody eh. told you about this show today, right? You didn't, eh. Nobody prepped you on this show. Because now you've destroyed the ability to ask the next question. I should go to my no, notes, I but Led I don't know how to do it. it. We're going to keep going. So now we are down to four teams. Blah, according to you, Florida Atlantic, Blah. San Diego State, Blah. UConn, Miami, Wilbon. Which of these teams would you make the favorite? You don't even care. They're all, they're all worthy. I don't care. They're all worthy. They really are. They're all worthy. Like, like each one of these things I watched, and you and I – you know, actually have a long-standing relationship with one of the coaches, that being Jim That's Laranega right. in Miami. A That's long right. time, 25-plus right. years with him. More. And I found myself, More. like, saying, this is amazing. George Mason in 2004. But anyway, I don't want to get too far afield with that. UConn's a favorite. Because UConn just beats every non-conference opponent they've played all year, they beat by double digits. So they're the favorite. Right. I don't even know. I don't care what Vegas says. I don't know what Vegas says. You will take us through Vegas and what they've got. I don't give a damn about Vegas. I don't know what Vegas says. So they're the favorite, right? But right. all these teams they, are yeah. deserving for what they navigated. They're the favorite because they played four games in this tournament, and they won by 24, 15, 23, and 28. They're killing it. So, yes, yeah. they're the favorite, even yeah. though they went through a patch in conference where they lost six out of eight, and they fell from ranked second in the country to I don't know where. I underrated them. I underrated the Big East Conference. They are certainly the favorite. Let me get to Laranega. Um, well, before that, the other thing that's true, Mike, is that at the end of Saturday night and going into Monday, either Florida Atlantic 
But San Diego State is going to be playing for the national championship. Today is March 27th, I believe. If on February 27th you had said to me, hey, I got an idea. Florida Atlantic's playing San Diego State tonight on TV. Let's watch. If you had said that to me, I would have said, get out of my house. That's because why I, I just I mean, said I don't yeah. care. I, you I made understand. fun of me. That's exactly why Jim I said Laranago. I don't care. Jim Laranago, who we've known since he was an assistant with Terry Holland, when they recruited Ralph Sampson of Virginia this 40, 40 years, years ago. ago. 40 okay. years, yeah. He took two unbelievably long-shot teams to the Final Four. George Mason, who had never been there before and ain't ever getting there again. Yeah. And Miami, which is a football school and had never been there before. And I'll tell you this, Mike. He should be in the Hall of Fame. Yep. Jim Laranay should be in the Hall of yeah. Fame for doing that. Yeah. It's amazing. I think seven coaches, I think seven coaches have taken more than one Not school schools like that. to the final Not four. Not schools like that. Nagel. When you're one of seven ever, ah, that's pretty Coming impressive. Coming up, Caitlin Clark puts on a show while Kim Mulkey Woo! leads LSU to the Woo! women's final four, which is a bigger Man. deal. And did Pat Bev go too far in mocking LeBron? He mocked LeBron. You know what's LeBron, great about the final four? The greatest thing about the Final Four is there's three teams on I-95, the greatest highway in America. Nobody in Man. Chicago. It's mail time. Proof that you have issues. Mail See time. first here. Iowa and LSU advance to the Final Four. What's the bigger deal? What Caitlin Clark or Kim Mulkey pulled off? Caitlin Clark. Uh, Caitlin Clark. Come on. Nobody's ever, there's been one 40-point triple-double in NCAA history. None in the tournament. And, I, I mean, this is insane. You watch her. Yesterday, Tony, I wasn't even watching at the beginning. And I get a text from somebody on my text chain saying, hey, Caitlin Clark has either scored or insisted on, like, 18 straight points. By the time I got, I turned over and kept watching, it became 30 consecutive points. She's the show, okay? Noel. And Caitlin Clark, their March Madness. Everybody else, take a step back. They are the stars. The answer to everything is Caitlin Clark. Not going to insult Caitlin Clark. She is amazing. She is tremendous. To get that stat all the way down the line, she scored or assisted on 70 of Iowa's 97 it's points. Crazy. It's just, it's amazing. All right, but they were pretty good the moment she got there. If I have this right. She was 20 and 10 as a freshman two years ago, 24 and 8 as a sophomore before this year. Kim Mulkey takes over a program that had once been a great program and had fallen on lean times. I think they were 9 and 13 when she got there. You know what her record is at LSU? It's 58 and 8. It's 58 and 8. Look at what LSU has done. They hired Brian Kelly and they hired Kim Mulkey. They spent a lot of money on people and they're going to win championships as a result of that because the coach there. Won a championship at Louisiana Tech as a player, and she was on a gold medal Olympic team in 1984. Won everywhere she's been. She won been. three titles at Baylor as the head coach at Baylor, and she's going to win at LSU. So in my mind, that's sort of quicker into the Final Four, quicker getting good. I just want to say one other thing, because there's a game tonight that I do care about, and that is Maryland and South Carolina. Oh, yeah. Maryland gets the opportunity to play against the best, and it's an opportunity, Mike, to play against the best team in the country, undefeated South Carolina. I assume South Carolina will win, but I'm rooting for Maryland. It's a local Can for I me. remind people quickly, yeah. Kim Mulkey, you, name, you listed all those credentials. Kim Mulkey's in yeah. something we like to call the Basketball Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame. Okay? Yeah. So yeah. anyway, yeah. doubting Great. Kim Mulkey's credentials across the board from the time she was about 16 until now. And by the way, I'm going I'm to come. I'm going to go here for a second. The controversy is the fashion and what she's wearing. It's fabulous. She's a show person. She knows what she's doing. She gets attention for herself, her school, and then she delivers. I, 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 I want to see what Kim Mulkey's wearing to the game. Come we on, have no now. time for it's this now. Show. Now we have no time. Huh? We have no time for this. Leave it to Wilbon uh -huh. to talk about women's fashion. I love it. Fashion. Anybody? Are you fashion. okay? I, I don't care about this next question. She take all the time you want. Are you okay with your boy Patrick Beverly mocking LeBron as too small? Tony, the Bulls have been transformed. Patrick Beverly, Chicago, born and raised. Patrick Beverly, when he got finally signed with the Bulls, traded, signed, whatever, 
He says, you know, I'm going to come home and I'm going to do this in front of the hometown people with my hometown team and I'm going to make Zach Levine better and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. He's delivered on all of it because they're 10 and 5 since he got there. They've won 7 out of 9. He's a tough guy. Last night, Billy Donovan said, we were too quiet. I mean, he's the personality. He's been there a minute and a half. But when he did this to LeBron, it's part of who he is. But I know if he had done this to Michael Jordan, we all would have said, oh, my God, Jordan is going to score 60 on him the next game. Now I want to see what LeBron's going to do because they play again this week in Chicago. I can't believe LeBron's going to take this. I can't believe the Bulls can beat them again. Did he go too far? Yes, but that's who Patrick Beverly is. And the Bulls have been a different team with him. So I don't know how yeah. to reconcile those two things. Let me dismiss Patrick Beverly very quickly. He's yappy, but he vowed vengeance on the Lakers and he exacted it. So my hat is off to Patrick Beverly in this case. Yeah. I want to talk about LeBron for a second because I got this great LeBron quote. LeBron has a magic foot doctor. He won't name yeah. the doctor specifically, but he said, I'll and this is a direct LeBron quote, the, show. the LeBron of feet. Called his yeah. doctor LeBron of feet. I love this. I love self-referential egomania. Wilbon, you have foot problems. <laughs> you should maybe get this guy unless you've got the Michael Jordan of feet. Well, Let's take you know, one last break. You know. Still to come. Amid a lot of bad news for the Mavericks, Luka Doncic gets some good news, relatively huh? speaking. The Mavericks, what a joke they are. Tonight's matchup <laughs> of Joel Embiid and Nikola Jokic, hey, you know, not happening. We'll tell you why the Mavericks, they're slobs. Happy time, people. Happy 60th birthday, Randall Cunningham. Cunningham was a four-time pro bowler and a star on the Vikings and the Eagles. Cunningham had a huge arm, was also a powerful runner. What has been forgotten is that Cunningham was an All-American punter at UNLV. In a sense, his type of quarterbacking was a precursor to what has become the norm now. We could probably draw a line from Cunningham through Steve Young, through Michael Vick, to Lamar Jackson and Justin Fields. Cunningham's daughter, Vashti, is a decorated high jumper who got a bronze medal at 2019 World Championships and is on the U.S. Olympic team. That touchdown where he's bouncing off New York Giants and throws into the end zone, I believe I covered that game. Randall Cunningham was a magician. And Tony, now I, I think Steve Young may be a minute or two older than Cunningham. Okay. Which maybe means okay. it goes from Steve Young to Cunningham. But wow, talk about birds of a feather, pun intended. You know, there's a lot of great quarterbacks out there now. I don't think any more, any more exciting to watch than Randall Cunningham. Happy anniversary, Bill Walton. Around this day, 50 years ago, the great UCLA center made 21 of 22 field goal attempts, scored 44 points to lead UCLA past Memphis State with Tubby Finch and Larry Keenan for the Bruins' seventh straight NCAA title. This game was in St. Louis. Walton later joked that John Wooden told him, quote, I used to think you were a good player until you missed that one shot. That 44 is still the most points in a final. This was Walton's last college title. The next year in Greensboro, Walton's UCLA Lost in the national semifinal to NC State with David Thompson and Tom Burleson, who two days later beat Marquette for the title. All right, I know that you have experience with both those games. Which was more impressive to you, Walton or another thing you were courtside for, Christian Leighton? Which one? A 21 out of 22, and I was younger then, and I'd never been to St. Louis before, so it's a big deal. <laughs> Happy trails to Luka Doncic's 16th technical foul. The NBA has rescinded Doncic's 16th technical foul, making Doncic eligible for the Mavericks game at Indiana tonight. The threshold for a one-game suspension is 16 techs, which Doncic picked up yesterday for cursing at a referee in a loss at Charlotte. Doncic has flirted with a suspension the last two seasons, amassing 15 technicals in each. Last season, a 16th was similarly rescinded. Dallas is now 7-13 since trading for Kyrie Irving, after going 29-26 without Irving. The Mavs are now out of the play-in. So how's that trade working out? Great job by Mark Cuban on this one. Yeah, I'm not going to just blame Mark Cuban. There's plenty of blame to go around, certainly with Kyrie. People keep betting on him. Why? I don't know. Luka, who's – this is his official pose. Not this. He'd be the logo if the logo was this, whining. They look awful, Tony. They do. I mean, what a whiny bunch of little pooches they are right now. 
One correction, 17 coaches have brought two different schools to the Final Four. Not seven, as Wilbon said, but I, I don't know that anybody's that brought two schools like Larinaga's brought two schools that have never been there Damn. before. Let's go to the big finish. The Warriors lost to the Timberwolves. Is that significant? Yes. I mean, it broke their nine-game home winning streak. More importantly, they're like two games out of being out of the play-in. There's a lot to go out there, even for the dubs. 49ers GM John Lynch says Brock Purdy's the leader in the clubhouse. To start at QB when healthy, does that surprise you? Very much so. They traded up to get Trey Lance. This guy was Mr. Irrelevant. It very much surprises me. 18-year-old phenom Alyssa Thompson scored just 11 minutes into her NWSL debut. Are you impressed? Yeah, how about this? She's still in high school. I would say so. Mike Trout is building a golf course in New Jersey that will be designed by Tiger. Does that excite you? Three hours and 10 minutes from my house to Vineland, New Jersey. I need a cart. Last one. Sixers at Nuggets tonight. Embiid out as a precaution. You're disappointed, right? Yeah, but he's got to be healthy for the playoffs, Tony. I understand the objective. Time, time, Tony. I'm Mike Wilbon. Same time tomorrow, knuckleheads. And now, here is Sports Center. No Embiid. No Embiid Jokic, Tony. I was all into that tonight. Nah, I'm not. Yeah. It's your fault. I'm watching Maryland.